He posted some photos of some individuals. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, do you recall that? It kind of, yeah. Ish. Yeah. I have the guy's phone number and everything. Why? What's up? Oh, I just wanted more information on that. Did you see him kidnapped? Hello? Did you see them? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I just was looking for a little bit more information on it. Did, did you, like, witness him being kidnapped? Oh, he, dropped, or? he dropped everything. No, this is what happened, okay? So I responded to um, a 911 just saying help. That was it. So I responded. I got there. There was a guy in handcuffs and another a taxi driver that was with the guy. I'm like, well, what, what the hell is going on here? And the guy in handcuffs said that a... Uh, what are them blue people called? The, uh, gang that, uh, I don't know, one of the blue people took him and, and had him at gunpoint down there by the dock where I got the call from. So I said, okay, and they said he was still down there. So I went down there looking for this guy. Eight two thirty eight northbound Bisbee hey. Avenue, black and color Subaru, WRX. It's gonna be Oscar occupied at no time. Anyway, I couldn't find find this blue uh, guy anywhere in sight. Right? Wait, wait, wait. He he said that somebody else was being kidnapped, or that he had been kidnapped. That, so that guy was two. kidnapped down there. He was like taking hostage at gunpoint or whatever, and was put in hand. Okay. So I I couldn't find this blue guy. So I told him to go make a report in the police department about what happened and everything. Brought him the tow box, got him checked out, and everything. Then. He kept calling me over and over again, wondering, like, what's the status of it, this and that. So I started trying to get all this evidence and try to make this statement okay. Then he called me and said that he was what scared of them and that they threatened his life and that he was dropping everything he had put up for charges and everything and he, he doesn't want anything to do with it. He wants me to leave it alone. So that's what I did. I left it alone. You don't want any charges in it. I'm done with it. And he said if they found out, they found out that they were, uh, that he turned them into the police department, then he's going to be killed. So he uh, got charges and was scared of his, scared to death. I'll tell you, that guy was weird. But I still have his number though. If you, if anyone wants to talk to him or need me to get a hold of him, or whatever. I just haven't heard from him. Oh uh, no, 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 I, I, yeah. I've spoken with him. Uh, what did he say? Uh, pretty much the same. I, I was just wondering where you got the photos then. Of the individuals. That was after the fact then? Yeah, Went down and after, did surveillance. I started trying to make a case on it, you know? So I started going back through all my stuff and really taking it serious, you know? And then he just dropped it. That was the end of that. Because he called me and said that, because he knew where they lived, right? So he called me and said that, you know, there's like five of them here. All these guys are the ones that are after me. Come get some pictures. I said, okay, this is perfect. I'll hide up on the mountain. I'll get some pictures of them so we can use it later on for your case or whatever. So I did. Like I said, I was just trying to get all the evidence I could for him to hope that maybe the detective team or whatever could maybe go after them or whatever needs to be done. But How long after, uh, you know, he had been harassing you for more information, finding out the status of, of everything that was going on, did he contact you and said, never mind? And he it was, was like two days after. He told me to meet him here, so I came down here and he said he was scared. He had a friend with him. He said that he was scared and they, were, they threatened him that they were going to kill him if anything, if they got involved with the police at all. And that was it. So he said he wanted to drop it. That was the last I heard from him. He doesn't call me, doesn't text, nothing. That was it. That was a weird deal. I'll tell you, probably the weirdest thing I've had happen to me in, in the police department. Just a weird gig that guy. What did he specifically say? Um, that was going to go ham, you know. I thought it would open up a lot of doors, you know, the syndicate. Uh, what did he, he specifically say when he returned back here? We just said that he was, you know, nervous that they would find out that he turned them in and that they were going to kill him if they ever did and they were going to bash his knees in. He was, he was just done with it. He decided he didn't want to charge them or do anything with it. Always said, I said okay, that's on you, fella. Here's where I left. Okay, let me summarize this real quick. Um, you responded to a 911 call. Do you remember where the 911 call was? It's fine if you don't remember the location. Uh, but it was somebody that was requesting help. You arrived on scene. You saw a taxi cab driver and an individual in handcuffs. I assume the taxi cab driver was the 911 caller because the man in handcuffs couldn't dial 911. 
Um, he expressed that he had been kidnapped. Um, and then he, uh, you know, you, you advised him to follow a police report. And, uh, he attempted to contact you several times. Was this several times over a course of a few days, or was it all in the same night? Um, it was, it was a course of a couple of days. Do you have text message history with him that you'd be willing to share? Uh, I think so. Let me, what the hell was his name? I think it's Tyrone. That'll be correct. It's Tyrone Jose. Yeah, I've got some text messages, but, um, yeah, I've got some text messages here, actually. Damn, too bad it wasn't Valentino. I could have been like, I will push up, man. Yeah, bro, what's your girl? I'm okay. quite. Um, right, I'll be then over the course of a few days, he attempted to contact you, asking about the status of the reporter investigation. Um, also that night, he shared a threatening text message he had received by one of the individuals. Um, and then a couple of days later after that, he returned to Mission Row and requested the report and the investigation be dropped because he was nervous that they might find out and he feared for his life. Yeah, because I have a message from five days ago, which, well, you know, that'd be around the time. He said, I don't know if I can do this. The guy called me and said, if I go to the police, they will kill me. And I said, okay, up to you. I have all the text messages. Uh, if, you, if you could send those to me, that would be so helpful. Okay, yeah. Why? Did Oh, I'm just, uh, writing a report, doing what I do. Okay, I'm gonna send them over now, okay?